And now to a developing story about the dangers of transporting crude oil by train. Take a look at this. An explosion last December in North Dakota. An oil train derailed, exploded, burned for hours, causing an entire town to evacuate. The amount of crude oil being transported by rail is up 440 percent since 2005. That's according to the National Transportation Safety Board, which is holding a series of hearings about oil trains and safety. And on Thursday, the Secretary of Transportation is scheduled to visit that site of the North Dakota explosion. Joining us to talk about this is reporter Rob Davis of The Oregonian. Rob has written extensively about oil train safety. Rob, welcome. Thank you. What have you learned about, in your writing, what have you learned about the safety of these trains that surprised you? Well, fundamentally, they're not as safe as they could be, and that's something that we've discovered after the fact. There has been a massive increase in the amount of oil that's moving by rail. Uh, you know, 8,000 tank cars in 2007 and something like 400,000 tank cars moving oil last year. Um, that's going through communities in Oregon and all across the country, and it has caught regulators, firefighters, emergency responders, and public officials and residents uh, by surprise. Uh, so is it the tanks themselves or the way those trains are being driven? It's a, a combination of a couple of things. Uh, the tank cars that are moving the oil uh, were designed decades ago. They're not as safe as they could be. There's a newer design that's available, but the majority of cars aren't that newer design. Um, and then you add to that the oil that's being uh, drawn out of the earth is coming from North Dakota. It's saturated with more flammable gas than normal types of oil. People didn't think that crude oil could explode until it started exploding in these trains. So how do these communities along the rail that carries those trains uh, and carries that oil, how have they responded to all of this? Well, I think with uh, a fair bit of alarm, there was an accident July, in July in Quebec. Uh, a, an oil train there crashed in the middle of the town of Lac Megantic. It killed 47 people, leveled part of the town. And, you know, for, for oil by rail, that was its version of the Exxon Valdez, uh, which, um, you know, mobilized a regulation to um, address oil moving in tankers. And the, the question now is whether uh, states and the federal government are going to mobilize in the same way to address the risks of oil moving in trains. So, so what information do folks have? I mean, if you've seen an explosion near your community, obviously you know that, that, that the train tracks are carrying oil. But, you know, if you don't, if you don't have some sort of problem, how do you find out about whether or not oil is coming by or coming through your neighborhood? Well, railroads are very secretive, and it has been very difficult for me to learn what's moving around Oregon. I've been reporting about this almost exclusively for four months, and I'm still fighting the Department of Transportation here to learn the volume of oil that's moving around. Nobody wants to talk about it. And Is when that you for go security out these reasons? Towns in the they say that it's for security reasons, but the oil is moving in mile-long trains through public areas with a label on it that says that it's crude oil. So it's not moving in secret. Yeah, so it's not, a, in your opinion, it's not safety versus security. No, I think that the communities where this uh, oil is moving have a fundamental right to know what's moving through their community. Uh, firefighters need to know what's moving so they can respond to an accident if it happens. And it's been extremely difficult for us to pry that information loose just to find out what's moving in one state in the country. So states and, and even local fire departments don't have any idea that there might be a train carrying this sort of hazardous material? They didn't know that it was coming. They're aware now, uh, you know, we've had stories on the front page for months about it, so they know that oil trains are here. Um, but they were here for nine months before anybody knew um, what they were moving or what the flammability of it was or the potential for it to explode. And this is something that's going to continue increasing. Um, oil is going to continue moving by rail. Uh, across the river from Portland, there's a proposal to build the largest crude oil export facility uh, in the Pacific Northwest. So it's something that we're clearly in the early stages of 
uh, trying to figure out. And obviously something you'll be following. Rob Davis of the Oregonian, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thanks so much.